But look. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> That's going to be the wee bit before the video. How can you for once not be the wee bit before the video? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Booktube with Simon and Amy. Still the only show on the internet that says hello and welcome to Booktube with Simon and Amy. We're going to do another one of these pointless haul videos today where we share our opinions on books we haven't read yet and cannot reasonably have an opinion of. All books that we will discuss in this video will fall into two categories. We will either go ahead and read them, in which case why not just watch our informed opinion video? Or we won't bother reading them at all, in which case you might as well just ask yourself if it looks good because your guess is as good as ours. But you're still here, you clearly have nothing better to do with your life, so just before you drink yourself into a stupor and question why, let's do it. I like haul videos. This is our first haul of the year. Thanks to the virus. Who's certain? Go you first. Me. So this go one. Go you first. You go first. This, how many have you had? Calm down. So uh, one this received I post this morning. <laughs> right, let's not do the food video like you do. Received this in the post this morning I did. Um, and this was brought to my attention by everyone who reads Must Converse. Um, I quite honestly don't know what it's about. <laughs> Everybody who reads Must Converse posted a really, really, really cool video with, um, with the author, which I will link below if I remember. Um, still don't really understand what the book is about, but I know that I want to read it. Um, it's giving me um, Mark Z. Danielowski vibes. It's sort of... I don't know. I don't know. This is what I mean about whole videos. This is totally pointless. I don't know what this book is like. I will read it, and then I might tell you. Over to you. I've read the back of that like eight times now, and I still don't know what it's about. It's maximalist. Maximalist. Well, it's like minimalist, but max. Um, I got the mis the Mister Man. <laughs> <laughs> I did <didn't> <laughs> The Whisper Man by Alex North. So it's supposed to be part thriller, part horror. Part horror. Why are you whisp oh I hate when folk whisper though. It gives me the creeps. I don't like it. There's something a bit pervy about a whisper. It just doesn't sit right with me. I don't like it. Even when folk whisper in films or TV shows, it makes me a wee bit uncomfortable. I'm like, oh, you're a pervert. This may be a good time to remind everyone to like and subscribe. Oh, Danny. Kiss me the groom, man. Click the button. Oh, hey, you're your tongue faces. You know that I only do that when I'm really freaked out. <laughs> Subscribers oh. for some arbitrary point in the future, at which point apparently our lives will improve. So fun. Anyway, part thriller, part horror, so I thought it looked like it could be quite interesting. Imagine the trailer. Part thriller, part horror, all whispered. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dying turtle. A dying turtle. I. I swear you got my knuckle. Sorry, but enough's enough. You should just try and zhuzh it up a bit. Zhuzh it up. Horror, thriller, whisper man. Do do. Do like Candyman. Nobody does book halls quite like us. 
now. That's why. That's why um, we're successful elsewhere. Mm. Anyway, wee boys go missing. There's some childhood myth of the Whisper Man, who's essentially a bogeyman equivalent. Don't I can hear you? I can hear your tongue move, <laughs> Danny. And uh, uh, they try to figure out <laughs> who's doing it, and it could be quite cool. So that's my first one. Okay, uh, my next. Oh, well, actually, the next one isn't here, but I thought I might as well mention it since we're talking about these sorts of things. I have ordered a copy of Rabbits, um, which was brought to my attention by Book Invasion, and it, it, Book Invasion described this as being like uh, the number 23 meets the Da Vinci Code meets um, Black Mirror meets Mr. Robot. So a lot of things are meeting up, but uh, essentially, uh, if you wake up in the morning and a photo on the mantelpiece has changed a little bit, or the bookmark in your book has moved to a later page, you don't remember getting there, then that is maybe a suggestion that you are in the game and you are in the world of the rabbits uh, and you're playing the game and it's all about reality and how uh, things affect reality. Um, and it's also about collective... It's, um, oh, what's the name of it? The um, Mandela, Mandela effect. effect, where everybody collectively agrees that they believe something that didn't happen um, so check out the book invasions review of it um, as soon as I saw it I ordered it and I really have not been so excited to order and read a book for such a long time I am buzzing for it to arrive and to get it read and you want to read it too. Aye, I was going to say I'm buzzing for it as well because as soon as you're finished I'm just going to pinch it and read, it, read it probably mm, that's cool Aye, we could do we could do another like 100 page catch up to that one so I'm really excited for that. Next up, um, this is another one that we're both planning to read, aren't we? You picked it up, and I picked it up as well. So it's The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. Again, it's about a serial killer. Apparently there's a theme with my books here. Um, a serial killer, and he's killing girls. Some girls get away, and then he's tracking them down in the future. It talks about snuffing their lights out, and I don't feel like that's just a, like snuff the light out kind of comment so I feel like there could be supernatural elements to this maybe a wee bit sci-fi which could be cool you don't feel like snuffing their light out is just a snuffing their light out comment aye because like it's very specific and it's called the shining girls so I feel like they maybe have like a power or something mm. I mean the last time I see this in a book called about that vampire book it was not a vampire book so I mean, dedicate my words for it. Um, I got uh, a duology. The first part is called A Million Little Pieces by James, <coughs> excuse me, James Free. And there's a follow up, my friend Leonard. Um, this is non fiction. This is a book uh, by a guy called James who went into rehab at 23 years old, um, body completely wrecked uh, because of substance abuse, and it is about his time in rehab and then um, sort of coming out. And, and put his life back together. Uh, the back of the book tells me that it is very funny, very powerful, um, very hard hitting. And I don't know why, it just caught my eye. I'm really interested to read about this guy's journey. Um, it seems to be a very well received book and I'm interested. Um, and Leonard is somebody that he met in rehab and this is about what happens when they leave rehab and uh, what happens next. So uh, not my typical kind of read, but I really am looking forward to to giving them a go. Now I'm going to read them too. <laughs> this has been up for us who have hardly any crossover in our books. We've done quite well today. Well, right. You're just learning to love my literature. Mm, don't think so. I got An American Marriage by Tiari Jones. So there's a black couple in America. The male gets done with a crime that he hasn't committed and goes to jail for 12 years. And his wife shacks up with the best friend. She's sure. obviously struggling to deal with the situation that life has thrown at them. And she finds some comfort in his best friend. That's one way then, of putting it. <laughs> um, and then the husband's conviction gets overturned, comes home expecting to receive a, a wife and family as he left it. And obviously it's it's quite a different situation he comes home to. And I believe it's about how the couple try to, to navigate that. Sounds very, very interesting. I've had it on my radar for a wee while. But isn't so. it just navigate it out the door? 
with his toe quite far up our rectum. Look, he's in jail. Oh well. I'll remember that when you go to work. Well, it's like jail, you've well. got to go in, you can't get out. <laughs> so next I bought The Noble Liar, um, which is another non-fiction book. It's by Robin Aitken. Um, I really don't know <laughs> what I'm going to make of this. Um, this book claims the BBC uh, is biased. Why have you pulled a weird face? Sorry, the dog's just done a weekend of <laughs> You eating? Oh. Very funny, but the dog's upstairs and we both know it. Right. <laughs> He's lying there. Well, you, you, you decide who you believe. Oh. So, um, yeah, this, this alleges that the BBC <laughs> news coverage is biased. Um, Anti-Brexit coverage, uh, very woke, uh, very anti-Donald Trump, uh, etc. So, um, this is, this is a guy who has worked at the BBC for 25 years, got really annoyed with them, left, and has written this book about how their news coverage is biased. And so I am interested in reading this because personally, I quite like BBC news. I find it's relatively fair and balanced. Um, I, obviously, they, they get a lot of flack for being uh, both pro-conservative and pro-labour. Um, they do get quite a lot of stick for being anti-independence. I don't really hear very many unionists accusing them of being pro-independence and fairness. Um, but uh, I don't think I'll necessarily agree with everything in this book, but I'm really interested to hear an account because often you just hear nyeh, 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 nice BBC. and so I really want to hear someone back it up and maybe um, share what Kelly Ann Conway might describe as alternative facts um, and just get a bit of understanding into the argument because uh, I guess he worked there and I didn't and I don't know what I don't know and he knows and this is how I'm going to find out. I got um, Stravaganza City of Masks like by queen. Mary Hoffman. Oh, it does, eh? That would be a great drag queen name. Stravaganza. Sashay away. <laughs> so I picked this up because Elliot Brooks spoke about it in a video. She did a video where it was like older YA series that have really ugly covers and I'd be inclined to agree. So when we came home, this book gave me an existential crisis because I was like, oh, well, it must be quite an old book then if it was in her video. So I checked the year it was published and it was published in 2001. So I'm like, that's no old. And then it hit me that that was 20 years ago and now I feel about 87, which is stressful. <laughs> so I, that is quite an older book. Um, but basically our main character is very very ill and is lying in bed and then wakes up elsewhere and realises that he has the power to teleport himself to wherever he would desire and he finds himself in this other world of magic and mystical intrigue. So right up my street and there's a map. It's the, it's the Selling point a good book for me. Go on then, say it. What? Stravaganza. Shanty you stay. Oh, aye, aye. Waste of words. This is Eleven by Mark Watson, very funny comedian. Um, it's about a radio DJ called Xavier who uh, is getting on with dispensing his advice overnight on the phone in lines and then uh, in the daytime struggles to live by this advice and <laughs> it's about some decisions that he makes that then have um, impacts on, I think, is it 11? Diff uh, yeah, it will be 11. <laughs> 11 people um, sort of are affected by his decision unbeknown to him and it's just about the six degrees of separation and how the decisions you make have consequences that you can't necessarily predict or be aware of and how our lives are all interconnected and uh, the impact of decisions that you don't make and I've always found those themes to be really interesting so uh, I am looking forward to this and Mark Watson is quite funny so I, I'm, I'm confident this is going to be a good book. I think I'll also read that one too. <laughs> Next up I got The Cutting Room by Louise Welsh. So this is about our main character Rilke and he 
finds photos in an attic of a rather pornographic nature. Um, they're a wee bit snuffy and um, he becomes obsessed with trying to find who the owner of the photographs are and whether or not they are real or they are Did you fake. go today? Snuff books are us. Yes. Um, I read this years and years ago and then Sarah from Sadie Reads again has been talking about this on her channel because it was part of her, um, oh I was going to say shelf love, but that's no... That sounds horrible. No, it is. That's what she calls it, shelf love. No, she doesn't. Eh? Shelf indulgence. Shelf indulgence. Shelf love sounds. Also, you went pornographic. So, she's been reading this again as part of our um, shelf indulgence series where she reads her old five star reads to see if they're still five stars. And it just put me in the mood to read it again, so I picked this up. Which I've got a splinter. Um, <laughs> I picked up The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I have. I've picked it up multiple times in the supermarket and so on, I've wanted to get it. I just couldn't justify paying £10 for a book when I've got so many books to read and so I kept not buying it. Um, and then Daniel at Guilty Feet picked it up on his massive book haul in London mm. and so I just thought, when I saw it today, it's time. So it probably needs no introduction, I'm sure you've come across it already, um, but it is about four uh, people in their 80s who get together on a Thursday to solve unsolved crimes or to investigate unsolved crimes and then shazam a murder happens in their village and they're actually in the middle of trying to then solve the murder and nobody gives them any credit because they're all dodgery people and uh, well I predict that they will <laughs> actually do quite a good job but who knows so I think that is going to be really charming and really nice I really enjoy older protagonists um, I think they're underserved in sort of storytelling in general and you know these are people who have lived lives and can be really interesting so um, I'm looking forward to this and obviously it's Richard Osman. And it's Richard Osman. Oh, we were just loving this household. Mm. We're a pointless household. Oh. <laughs> it's true. I mean, that's, that's not what I meant either. Like, see, for the next few while, I'm just not going to talk. You can just talk about my books that's to you, fine. right? For those uh, not in the UK, Pointless is a tea time <laughs> quiz show that Richard Osmond presents. <laughs> Next up, I got Fragile Eternity by Melissa Marr. This is um, it's another fairy book, really, and fairy books are not something that I've ever particularly been into before. But then I read through in a glass, and there's fae in that, and I really enjoyed it. And then I just recently got an arc of These Hollow Vows, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm quite on the fairy train. So I just decided to buy this because it spoke about fairies. It sounds like there are, is a fairy and a human who fall in love. Fairly standard, but there's going to be like a fairy human civil war. So could be quite interesting. Fair enough. Huh. Huh. This is The Other Passenger by Louise Candlish. It is the third Louise Candlish I've picked up. It may be the first Louise Candlish I actually bother to read. Um, so this is about someone who goes home with her friend Kit on the train and then Kit goes missing. <gasps> da, da, da. I hope you're not going to make your Kit go missing in the review. That was my plan. Um, <laughs> And then another passenger on the train says, I saw that person arguing with Kit. And they all, the, the narrator is like, who, me? What, me? No, I didn't argue with Kit. Did I? I didn't have anything to do with the disappearance. Did I? Let's find out. Next up, I got Drive by Daniel H. Pink. So this is a book about finding out what drives you, what drives other people. Um, and it's basically like a wee bit of a management self-help book just to help you um, motivate your team, which is something that I find really, really interesting. People management is the best bit of my job and I'm currently doing my CIPD. So I just find it always really interesting to find new ways to help people find their, their drive and the reason that they want to succeed and new ways to engage people. So it'll be dull for you but it might be interesting for me this is identical by Scott is it, I don't know if it's Churro or Turro <coughs> Scott Churro um, but or Scotty some, Tea but that makes him sound like a, an Italian snack so anyway Churros are Spanish oh, yes, did, why did I go so high pitched <coughs> Well, yeah, Churros did, are Spanish I did eat them in Spain so I really should have known that <laughs> anyways um, 
identical. So, I don't know, the head's maybe going to be a wee bit rubbish, it's hard to tell, but someone goes to jail for murder, they get out and then go to live with their identical twin, and the sister of the murdered person thinks something's fishy with that murder, there's something that we don't know, the identical twin is a mayor. I mean, I feel like the, the twist can't be it was the other twin that did it, surely. I mean, you've said that now it will be. If anybody's read it, just comment, because you're not going to want to read it if that's the twister, yeah. <laughs> Next, I got Lament by Maggie Steve Otter, and I didn't even read what this is about when I picked it up. I just got it because it was her, because I recently just binge read The Raven Cycle and absolutely adored it. Um, but having just read that, the back of it, that we snip at the end, it's another fairy book. So I'm going to love it. It's going to be brilliant. You, you did that joke the last time. Uh, Fair enough. <coughs> this is Tom and Susan. It's about Tom and Susan. <laughs> I feel like you need to sing Jack and Sarah, but about Tom and Susan, if you review that. What's Jack and Sarah? The Ben Fold song. Oh, about how they ended up different places and going different escalators aye, aye, and then they're dead. Aye. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Tom and Susan uh, were married, ceased to be married, and then Tom sends Susan a manuscript about, uh, it's a story about some murders that happen, and she's like, hmm, why is my ex-husband sending me stories about a murder that's happened? Uh, is it a confession? Who knows? Tom knows. Susan wants to know. Will Susan find out? We hope so, because I'm guessing if she doesn't, we don't, and there's just been a great big tease. Back to you. Next up, I got Girl Meets Boy by Ali Smith. I've never read any Ali Smith Ali before. Smith? Oh, yes. I really want to read her quartet. I know. Everybody raves about the quartet. So Angie's I thought, book chatter does not rave about the quartet. Well, no. Angie's doesn't. book chatter raves perhaps about how much she hates the quartet. <laughs> well, I thought instead of jumping into a quartet... If Angie's book chatter wants to send me her quartet that she doesn't want, <laughs> book you with Simon and Amy would be grateful to <laughs> Angie's book chatter for that. I thought I'd jump in because this is a, a shorter novel. It's basically a a wee bit of a love story for the modern time it's all about gender fluidity there is male to male female to female boy to girl love in this and just that it could be quite a good read it's pride month as well so appropriate repping with a shot you know ragdoll get six people chops the bodies up sticks them together yuck then publishes the name of the next six people who will be the next ragdoll to the media and the police have to stop them from being ragdolled. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's supposed to be, in no particular order, gruesome, twisty, wildly addictive, fiendishly inventive and a corker. I love that phrase, a corker. Next up, I got Shiver by Maggie Stavotter. Again, Shiver. just picked up because it was her. Um, but people start being mauled to death by wolves. Teenage girl discovers there are werewolves in their town. Oh, but wait a minute, werewolves are sexy. <laughs> Where enough? Oh, that's so bad. I said, Where enough? I know. <laughs> the truants is about a girl who goes to university. It seems like sort of a bit of a coming of age book. Uh, there's a friendship and then a big, big tragedy and it just seems like sort of a piece of coming of age um, lit fic, which I'm quite looking forward to. Uh, it's <laughs> like a wickedly brilliant Donna Tart, Agatha Christie and Leanne Moriarty all mixed into mm -hmm. one. So I am kind of, it looks like it is a bit of a genre bender. Um, the, the ironic thing about the truants, who are people who are absent, is that this one was present. Yes, we already have a copy. I bought another copy. So, Amy already had one. Yeah, I got it in a Chronicle book box. So I think the one we have is signed. So now we have two. Um, so if anybody watching happens to receive this for Christmas, this is why. It's not because we like you, it's because we have a spare. <laughs> Actually, if Angie's Books Chatter is up for a swap, <laughs> Four books you don't want in return for one that you love, you know where we are. Next up, I got The Dynamite Room by Jason Hewitt. So, what was that noise? <laughs> Explosion battle. Oh, it just sounded like you went. 
Oh no, I was going to do a bang and then I thought, oh, I don't want to disrupt your speaking, so I thought I'll just I'll do it quietly. <laughs> just like so you the, were sighing. the audience at home could enjoy my wee joke without disrupting your flow. Right. Mm, well, well. Should I just have done it loud? Because that would have been faster. Aye. Okay, anyway, go. Do you want to do that bit again? No, no, we're here. <laughs> so, um, wee girl goes on the run because she's Jewish and the Nazis are trying to hunt down her family. Bam! <laughs> So she hides and then apparently someone comes to her rescue, however he keeps her locked up in his house and she has to follow some really really strict rules, she's not quite sure who he is but he seems to know a lot about her and her family and knows all as it seems, so could be interesting. Not my usual type of book but... I forgot to say what it was. Anything for her? I don't remember this one. Oh yes, so this is when Billy's ex-girlfriend comes back on the scene. He goes to visit his sister who's about to die. Charming. Uh, ex-girlfriend turns up and she says, Hello, uh, I'm now married. My husband is a horrible, abusive chap. Uh, please help me fake my death. He goes, Okay. Helps <laughs> her fake her death. And then thinks, Hmm, maybe she lied about why she wants to fake her death. This is awkward. So I'm intrigued about how that all unfolds. Next up I got The Witches of Chiswick by Robert Rankin. Put my teeth in. Can that I was the today? name of my uh, computing teacher. Robert Rankin? Yes. Maybe he wrote it. Don't think so. So this to be honest sounds like a bit of a hodgepodge of a book. It sounds a wee bit dystopian, but there's some witches involved, so a wee bit fantasy. But basically the Queen's having an affair. Jack the Ripper is a robot sent for the future. It just sounds a bit mental and apparently these witches are manipulating things with their spells to make us forget that Jack the Ripper was really a robot for the future but when you read this book you'll be like oh my god so as he was. So. Uh, we've got The Retromancer by Robert Rankin. Yes we do that's on my list to read but I haven't read it yet. And on the back, I mean, he's in a power stance, holding a drill like it's a gun. I, I just, thought it was a gun. No, it's, it's a hand drill. Oh, it's a drill. Yeah. So, so, I feel like it's just going to be mental, but I like mental sometimes. This is Pulpit Rock. Um, so, a girl's found hanged, dead, murdered in a wedding dress on a secluded island so they lock down the island nobody can leave and there's a serial killer amongst them and I like mm. this sort of thing I really like the kind of small town cosy town mysteries where everybody knows each other and so it affects a community and then it's somebody within the community and um, so you kind of you get really invested in the relationships as well as in the who done it. Next up I've got the Daughter Smoking Bone by Lanny Lanny <laughs> Lanny Taylor um, everybody raves about this online and I've never read any Laney Taylor before it will be my first so excited for it. Main character lives two lives. She is an art student in Prague while she is also an errand girl to a, a big monster who is apparently like family. So she spends half her time in our world, half her time in the other world and basically the doors to the other world is closing so she needs to decide what life for herself she wants to live and apparently in the other world there are big beasties and monsters and magic and whatnot right up my street. I picked that up in the shop to suggest that you get it when you were holding a copy. <laughs> no. The half sister. Dad's dead. Later, family have dinner. Knock at door. Woman says, Hi, I'm your half sister. Your dad was my dad. There you go, dad's dead. This is awkward. Do we not watch a TV show a bit like that? Yeah, that was quite funny. It was funny. I've got Never Greener by Ruth Jones. Premise is high school sweethearts. No, 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 no. hold on, hold on. You missed a golden opportunity. Oh! What's occurring? Hmm? 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 Please stop trying to do Welsh accents on the internet. I mean, it. <laughs> um, high school sweethearts split up, Fair go their enough. separate ways. Aye. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then they meet up later on in life. 
They're both in obviously different circumstances, married partners, kids, the shebang, and it's about whether or not they should find out what they could have had or if they should go their separate ways. Premise to me sounds absolutely guff. Like a and I really didn't like books where we're supposed to root for people cheating on their partners. Like it just fucks me off, really. But it's Ruth Jones, so it's got to be genius. So I'm gonna get a go. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I've got is Running on the Cracks. And I'm going to level with you, the British people, and all other people. I haven't got a clue. Not a clue. But it's uh, the first novel written by Julia Donaldson, best known for The Gruffalo, The Stick Man, and these sorts of things. Um, and so, who doesn't love Julia Donaldson? Uh, we're going to give it a wee bash, I think. It's a novel for teenagers and just to make life even better, it is signed by Mrs. JD. So, um, this is it. This is the, this is the sum of my comments on that. Next up, we've got Semiosis by Sue Burke. This is another one you're going to give a go as well, aren't you? Um, oh, well, aye, it's got some trigger warnings for Simon. He hates plants. They freak him out. They do. And this is a book where basically humans go to another planet to try and inhabit it. When they get there, they realise that the plants are taking over. There's some sort of a magical, mystical, alien element to all the wildlife. And um, plants are out to get them. Plants are taking it back. I hate plants. <laughs> I just find it creepy that something that doesn't move and has no apparent sensation, can't feel, can't speak, can't just, it just looks like an inanimate object is actually alive and consuming stuff and alive and a being and alive and then they grow towards the sun that sort of really creeps me out like that day with the tulips yes you walked in and they'd like it's like a horror film as soon as you're not looking they turn and start to grow towards the sun like like creepy little buggers and some of them eat things Venus fly traps they've got mouths with teeth <laughs> no I do not like plants I hate it hate it As soon as something bad happens in your life, <laughs> or something great happens in your life, people give you dead ones! You're supposed to be grateful for these plant corpses littering up your house. I mean, the place stink. <laughs> Pollen stains everywhere. And the bees come. <laughs> little, sort of little things that just. You know, foot soldiers to these oh. evil genius plants that only move when you don't look and they get these little bees as they're like foot soldiers going bzzz. I don't think of bees or plants these foot soldiers they do, they pollinate, and they're plant they pollinate, for they world about, domination they move about, they're probably sending messages to their plants with their wee pollinated bits of pollen and yeah. I quite like a plant <laughs> That's my goal. Yeah. Right. Um, this is cat, st cat step. Cat step. Um, so it's about a mum who leaves her daughter in a car and then gets severe backlash from it from the local community. So then she moves away to Scotland. Um, we don't, you know, care what we do with our children. We'll leave them in cars. We'll leave them in bins. We'll, you know, do anything we like. Uh, leave them in the sink sometimes if you just want them out of the way. Um, <laughs> but this doesn't solve our problems and life gets more difficult. And I'm not really sure what happens. I don't know what kind of book it is. Uh, I don't know if it's like literary fiction. I don't know if it's a thriller. I don't know if there's some sort of severe consequence or if it's just about her um, sort of relationship with a society who wants to tell her how to bring up her children. I don't know, but it, I'm just interested in it and... Um, that's the sum of my remarks. Next up, I've got Affinity by Sarah Waters. Scott was just going on about um, Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters and Gunpowder Fiction and Plot's latest Friday Reads. So I just decided to pick this up because he made Tipping the Velvet sound really, really good. So I thought <laughs> this one might be quite good as well. When you say he made Tipping the Velvet sound really, really good, you mean the book? Not the uh, Yes, yes. Well, 
<laughs> spends five minutes in a dress and is a flipping lesbian now. Well, so what? <laughs> Who doesn't want to be a lesbian? Anyway, um, this is about a psychic and she's a wee bit disgraced. She is in jail and <laughs> apparently... A wee bit disgraced. A wee bit dis- just a wee bit disgraced. She's in jail and apparently loads of people are getting the compulsion to come and see her. So I sounds like it could be interesting, quite creepy. I'm game for it. Uh, this book is called What Are You Afraid Of? Oh. Well, for a second I was afraid of you hitting me right in the conk with that book. As you're a, so close to my face. As a, I am a master of this now. Mm. This book is called <laughs> What Are You Afraid Of? Um, and it's about a woman who has interviewed a serial killer for a book. Um, then she starts getting sent photos that look very similar to crimes that he has committed and she thinks is a threat and a vendetta against her Ooh. by someone trying to emulate the murders of the serial killer don't understand the motivation because surely if they are anti that serial killer then they really shouldn't be trying to do the same thing so it doesn't make a huge bit of sense thus far I'm sure it will Next up, um, I got the first two books in the Ugly series by Scott Westerfield. So I've got Uglies and I've got Pretties. So these are dystopian novels. That's what people call you and me when we're out. Aye, I know, I'm the Uglies. (laughs) (laughs) They um, basically value beauty over everything else. And so in society, you're separated into Pretties and Uglies. And obviously the Uglies want to be Pretties because they get a totally different quality of life so what the uglies get um, they get you know to be rich and famous and they get fast cars and patties and loads of lovely clothes and attention and blah 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 um, and the uglies don't get any of that um, so it's about our one main character and she is an ugly and then her friend goes missing and basically the powers that be um, offer her a trade and they say if you get your friend back we'll trade you and we'll make you a pretty um, so that's what it's about I believe like later on in the series there's like a wee bit of a reality TV show twist on it and stuff which I think could be quite interesting and I've seen loads of people rave about these books online but so. it's just current life <laughs> well maybe it is now I'm sure when they were written it wasn't it <laughs> This is unusual for me. I have bought a book of short stories. I know, you never do a short story book. I never do a short story book. But these are ten short stories uh, set at Christmas. Murder under the Christmas tree. So it includes the likes of Ian Rankin, Fab, Val McDermott. I really want to get into Hmm. Arthur Conan Doyle, Dorothy L. Sayers. I don't know Marjorie Allingham, to be honest. Um, But yeah, ten short stories, Christmas murders... Why the devil not? I do think a murder is quite a festive thing. Like, it's quite. That's because you do your Christie at Christmas, well, though. Yes, I do. <laughs> I read the Agatha Christie every Christmas, and so this is going to be a wee treat this year, I think, as well, to, to go alongside it. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> is that the dog again? No, it was me taking a sticker off my book. Sarky. Um, next up, we've got the Keys to the Kingdom series uh-huh. by Garth You've got the Nicks. Keys to the Kingdom. Watch out, Kingdom. <laughs> I don't think anybody would trust us with keys. I've no good track record. Anyway, um, Garth Nix is an author that I haven't read anything by, but I have a few books by, and I really, really want to get into. Um, and this is a, a YA series that he has written. Our main character as you would expect, gets keys to a magical kingdom and he needs to travel to all the different parts of this kingdom to find out what's going on. There's apparently something a wee bit amiss and he needs to solve it. And there's one every day, isn't there? There's yes, aye. place in the space of a week. Oh, you can just see you reflected in that stupid painting. Well, it's no you, is it? It's little Alex Horn. So if um, if it all happens in a week and it just makes it, does that mean that he might just save the world in the next of time? Is anybody got a free husband? <laughs> this is conspiracy of silence. Just don't put the husband. Um, so a guy, a wee boy gets murdered. And then they find in his pocket pictures of a schoolgirl who has gone missing or been murdered. 
uh, taken on the day that she went missing or was murdered. Um, so the investigators investigating it and all of the teachers and staff are refusing to say anything. The teachers and pupils at the school are saying nothing, hence conspiracy of silence. I like a school set book. Mm. Uh, reminds me of my um, experiment being a teacher for a while. Um, and so I think this could be quite good. There was a sticker on this, as often happens in the shops. Took the sticker off and it says Detective Inspector Gillian Marsh Book 5, which is quite disappointing. But uh, You've done a me. Welcome to the club. You do the first of the series. I'm starting with a fifth in a series. <laughs> But to hell with it. I'm going with it. How much backstory do you really need about Detective Inspector Gillian Marsh? Not much. Last one. Are you finished? I'm finished. Um, I'm just sitting here. So the last one is keep your eyes on me. Me. Uh, Keep Your Eyes On Me is about two women who meet in a train, both of them uh, no horrible men. One of them is a con merchant who's ruined their brother's life, one of them has uh, been married to her and just got his mistress pregnant, uh-huh. and they get off the train with a plan. And I think this could be um, some sort of modern day retelling of Strangers in a Train, which I read a couple of years ago by Patricia Highsmith. Um, so maybe they're going to like take care of each other's evil men and there's no motive for them to go after them. I don't know, that's what I'm thinking. But uh, it could be rather interesting. So find out what uh, Vittoria and Lily Power decide to do mm. in a future instalment of Things I Say. Would you like to tell them the funny happenings that we found in our book? Oh yes, so we found a book, um, Choke by Chuck Palahniuk, um, which, which we know I love. Is you know rather a sordid and weird book, and inside that book was a bookmark, which took the form of a signed photograph of David Hasselhoff. So we are interested in the Venn diagram of Chuck Palahniuk fans and David Hasselhoff fans and where they intersect. Oh, just for this one wee guy for Paisley. (laughs) Me. Because I'm a Palahniuk fan. I'm not a David Hasselhoff fan. No. Nah, if he pulled up to me and was like, get in my car, I'd be like, Paulson! Oh, get in my car. He's a creeper. You are a pal of Nook. Yes, definitely a pal of Nook. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed our opinions on things that we know absolutely nothing about. I'm sure you feel much more informed now than you did before you did this. Just imagine this time what you could have done. You could have put in a washing, you could have prepared dinner for tonight, you could have cleaned something, maybe done some work you've been procrastinating on. Um, but you haven't, so... Uh, This has been a waste of time. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. You don't need to know anything about these books apparently, so just comment randomly. And uh, we'll see you in a future video. Until then, don't eat yellow snow. Bon voyage. Can it see ya? Why not? (laughs)